Hey folks, Bobani here. I've spent lots of time using the cat and dog detect feature on the OM1 over the last couple of weeks and I just want to share my thoughts along with samples later on in this video. Now why photograph animals if animals aren't your thing? Well if anything it's good practice and that can carry over to the other types of shooting especially during winter where subjects can be a lot harder to find. While this is a cat and dog detect video, I tried the same setting on the squirrels, cows, horses, muskrats, and mink, and I'll let you know how that worked out shortly. Lenses used were the Olympus 40 to 150 f2.8, Sigma 56 mm f1.4, the Olympus 75 mm f1.8, and the Olympus 100 to 400. Now I use the custom function C4, which has settings at, of course, cat and dog detect continuous autofocus and tracking sensitivity at minus two and I used a mid-size box. These are just settings I'm comfortable with but of course others might prefer to use something different. Now as far as the general focus performance with still subjects the focus performance was really solid and consistent. Of course there's nothing to compare to previous Olympus cameras since the feature wasn't available but the important thing is that they got it right the first time and we don't have to wait a year or two before we get a firmware update and this feature really makes composing and focusing so much easier. Like when I tested bird detect in my previous video, the subject doesn't have to fill the frame to acquire focus. I was expecting still cats and dogs to be easy enough but what impressed me was how well it captured running dogs, big and small and I'll show you in some sequences a little bit later. So if you like to capture your dog or cat or into the pet photography space, you're good to go. I did have some misses when a dog had hair over the eyes and that takes some serious precision focusing to cut through that. Instead, the camera would usually focus on the face. Now as someone who's taken a lot of pictures of dogs, before I had this camera, I'd use of course the traditional focus points and my workaround was to simply increase my aperture just a little bit to ensure the whole face was in focus. Like in my older pictures I increased the aperture so that I would get more depth of field and more of the face. But from the eyebrow to the eye it's not that much of a stretch. So before I get to the rest of the images I did go for a drive in cow country hoping to get some horses just to see how well it detected their very distinctively shaped heads certainly compared to a dog or a cat. Well the focus was spot on. For some reason with the rectangular shape of a horse's head I expected the focus to do some funny business but it actually did a really good job. All right let's do some samples. Okay so you get a sense if you look up on the top right sort of where I was and, and uh, what I was dealing with in terms of landscape and stuff I wanted to get some shots of the dogs running towards me uh, you know running across the frame uh, running away from the frame <laughs> and uh, and so forth and so on so it was a it was a nice uh, time to do that so let me jump here so um, generally focus is really really good um, consistent I really found I could shoot from the hip and I knew that once I got my box around the dog it nailed it and so I'm just gonna keep going here same thing here actually make sure my stupid cursor is not in the way my apologies that's a picture before um, capturing squirrels no problem including black ones which is always the question mark for me whether it be a black dog a black squirrel or whatever how well would the focus compute and uh, it did really really well uh, as far as the turkey is concerned um, I had to use animal detect instead of bird detect you would think bird detect would be the option here but I think being the shape that a turkey is I think it was better suited for animal detect and in this situation after five or six shots I noticed that it was doing very well with that so I didn't bother with the bird I don't know that the bird would work real well here and by the way some of you who are saying the 100 to 400 from Olympus is soft no you know unless you've got maybe a bad copy or something no it's just amazing and that's why I did a video on this earlier in case you wanted to check it out because I just think this lens is amazing I was able to capture the turtle of course squirrel I'll let you know if I hit a picture where I did have some issues with the focus by the way um, so this is the dog you saw running earlier in the video he'll show up later because he was great for the running piece that I wanted to show French Bulldog by the way this is um, the previous pictures that you saw my apologies um, all these are with the 100 400 
Now I shift over to the 40 to 150 f2.8. As you can see again, I can shoot from the hip. I love the breed. This is a great loyal breed, this German Shepherd. And so this is a Great Dane. Pretty has a pretty cool coat, considering it kind of works with the background. Um, and the background did not confuse the auto system or the focus system, just like in Bird Detect. Uh, I find that rarely does a busy background fool the camera uh, from focusing on a bird in flight or what have you. German Shepherd, let's move in here. So this is where the running began. The two became friends and off they went. So uh, this dog across the frame, you know, busy background, stuck on there really, really well. Um, you know, and it wasn't a fluke. This was consistent, very consistent. Running away. Actually, I was a little surprised that the focus still stayed on the dogs as they were taking off. So I'll actually move up here. So it actually went like this, like this, across the branches, across the branches, and then I lost them. But again, great focus. Sequence, so, you know, running sideways, 45 degree angle, what have you, uh, this camera was capturing it. This looks like a dog fight, but it's not. They're actually playing. I just happened to capture the dog or capture the dog with a strange expression. I was hoping this dog was just jump into the water full of mud and, you know, create a really cool shot that way. But he didn't. He just glided across that water like Moses. Clown. Beautiful Staffordshire. So here's a case where sometimes your focus can jump a little bit because of the camera's angle being very low to the ground and you can see the foreground here um even though i did focus on the eyes and successfully i did but every once in a while it would glitch a little bit because of this kind of stuff i find sometimes when thin obstacles in the foreground touch the subject it can fool the camera a little bit but it was enough that i could still use it i just found that it would just do here 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 and then blip 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 blip, blip and then come back Again, you can see I'm just shooting from the hip here and I'm getting all these shots, no problem. There's a situation where, again, the dog is not filling the frame, no problem focusing on the pooch. Pretty short legs for the little guy. I think he probably wished he had longer legs because, man, he loved to play with the other dogs. He just couldn't keep up. Look at that expression. Oh, here I am, right here. I usually don't do, you know, lean over the dog type shots, but he came up and checked me out. What can I say? Um, here there's a thick branch in the foreground but did not fool the system I took several shots of him again when I take a picture and I'm not sure if uh, the camera um, like I'm not just gonna take a picture and say okay it got it what I'll do is I'll take a picture I'll focus somewhere else then I'll come back I'll focus away and come back and each time he was able to get the chipmunk so thick foreground uh, didn't seem to be an issue for the focus this is a French Spangle check out the lashes on this puppy some real Tammy Faye Baker specials here. A French Spaniel is actually a much bigger version than a English Springer Spaniel. Dog. Make sure this is out of the way. My apologies. So this is another situation. Camera almost on the ground, but very low to the ground. Will sometimes throw the focus off a little bit. Just a little bit. Not a lot, but just a little bit. If you find that you're not comfortable shooting with the animal to tech in that situation here you know just switch to single autofocus but what i would do is i would take a couple of shots and then it might jump off a little bit and come back and as soon as it did i would just take the photo this old fella skip skip old photos from omd1 camera so i got this shot no problem with the animal detect however in this case thinner branches led me to use the um, uh, the single autofocus. Now, I did get some, don't get me wrong, I did get some, but he had a pattern. He would basically jump up on this thing, and then we'd go below, and then he would go underwater, then we'd come up to the another spot, which you're gonna see next. And after he did sort of his trajectory three or four times, and I kind of got as to what he was doing, 
Um, like here, as you can imagine, with this type of obstruction, this particular version of the firmware uh, will struggle. It won't like, I don't know how Canon and Sony, all these other cameras do, but you know, maybe those cameras go straight to the eye. But right now, uh, with the box and eye situation that the OM uses, uh, this is a situation where if you think you're gonna, you know, it's a crucial shot, go to your single lot of focus. But, you know, he's a pretty cool animal, but they're vicious, man, I'll tell you. Horse cool eyes but again this particular situation here is going to confuse the system squirrel saw that dog earlier again an example of capturing a dog from a distance without requiring to fill the frame so you know when these detect softwares and the cameras started you know being marketed a lot of the reviewers would test um, these detect uh, focus systems by seeing how long does it take before your subject gets recognized by the camera and so believe me you're, it doesn't have to be close it does a great great job from a distance not just from up close this is a St. Bernard mixed with Bernese Mountain Dog in case there's dog people out there so when I got the camera a little over a month and a half ago, there was snow on the ground here in Quebec and I hate snow. God, I hate snow. I know I live in Quebec. I'm a Canadian, but I despise snow. But anyways, it got the muskrat. Animal attack. Yay. Squirrel. Squirrel. Look at that mustache. <laughs> There's a little running sequence of the dog, which of course you can't even see the eyes. How the dog even sees, I have no idea. And some more running action here. And again, the foreground, when it's thick and it's not like branches coming across your subject or whatever, no problem. What I also thought was kind of cool and surprised me is, uh, and maybe I shouldn't be surprised, I don't know, I've never used this detect stuff until I got this camera, but it actually creates a rectangular face around the horse's head so you can tell it's actually really identifying the horse and it's not just seeing it as just some blunt object with eyeballs and look at that expression I mean doesn't he look almost human kind of looks like Igor actually or E or whatever his name is and Winnie the Pooh horse cow um, not that you ever use you know continuous autofocus or some detect feature but for some reason the horns messed with the focus on the camera that's a cow with an attitude do not get an indoor cow during springtime same horse dog does not like to wait for its ball to be thrown this is again going back into winter this is the first week I got the uh, camera and before I did any bird detect stuff um, I went straight to animal detect because I was house sitting and it was close to a dog park so I said nah this is a good time to try it and it didn't disappoint and at that house I was house sitting a cat as well and so it gave me a chance to uh, really try the cat detect stuff or I should say animal detect on the cat um, I use a 75 mil f1.8 I've used a sigma 56 f1.4 and this particular one the 40 to 150 f2.8 did a really nice job like it was really confident in its focus and again this kind of thick um, solid foreground no problem focusing on whoops on the eyes and so nice job there for the camera nice job there too again it was just so easy let's move on that's the dog I was telling you about earlier he gave me lots of opportunities to try to just keep track with them and he didn't disappoint gave me lots of opportunities to test the camera really enjoyed this camera's performance this is the same park but different dog you can see that dog earlier in the background yeah really really pleased squirrel 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 blah 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 I think we're getting to the end here well they look like they're having fun <laughs> Dogs technically, apparently, aren't supposed to be able to smile, but they certainly have the mouth shaped to look like they do. Maybe that's why we love them so much, at least most of us. And that's it. 
Anyways, I think you've seen enough samples at least to get a pretty good idea that, uh, you know, considering I was shooting from the hip most of the time, my hit rate was incredibly high. So I'm really, really happy uh, with the performance. And if you're somebody who likes to photograph your dog or maybe you're even a pet photographer, um, you're really going to enjoy the performance of the animal detect. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video and bye for now.